Hey folks! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a nose cone for our rocket project using a program called Fusion 360. So to start things off, if you are in Fusion 360 and it's asking you to sign in and you're not sure what's happening, you need to make an account. Uh, this is a program where uh, you need to make an account to be able to use it. It's actually a paid program. It's usually, uh, I think it's like $80 a month or something crazy like that. As students, you can use it for free for the entirety of your school term. And you can also sign up for just a one-year free trial, which is a uh, like a non-commercial trial. So as long as you're not part of a company or anything like that. Anyway, the, the important first step is that you need to create an account. So uh, if you haven't already done so, go to Google, type in Fusion 360, and get yourself going and create an account. You need to either verify that you're a student with the education license, or you need to sign up for the free one-year non-commercial one. One of these two options will enable you to use this program for the rest of the course. If you don't do that, you only get the 30-day free trial. So if you're in, I'm going to start with just a new design because this is where things are going to be for you. It's just a blank screen. So we're modeling things in three dimensions, and so like we're starting off in an imaginary white blank plane. I always start all of my parts with a two-dimensional sketch. So in order to make things in 3D, we could just like put a blob down and start sculpting it, but that's not really what we want to do here. We want to measure out where everything goes. So I'm going to make a sketch. You need to make this sketch and start it on one of these three starting planes. So this corresponds to either the front of the part, the top of the part, or the right side. You can see that all up here in your navigation cube. I want this nose cone to be printed top, up, and down. So I want to start on this top plane right here. So that brings up this screen, and you'll notice that the buttons on the top have all changed. So right now we're in 2D sketch mode, two dimensions. You can't do any three-dimensional things while you can see this button that says Finish Sketch. Here we can do all sorts of lines, rectangles, circles, anything that's in two dimensions. So I'm going to start with a center diameter circle, and make sure it's the center diameter because we want to start here on what's called the origin. The origin just means like it's zero, zero in an imaginary plane. And so this is sort of the middle of everything. It's important to start things on the origin in case you want to use these uh, origin planes for a, like for a mirror. If you want to do a complicated part, like you want to design a car and you don't want to have to do everything twice on either side. Uh, if you want to make something like a snowflake and have 12 of everything, then you can make a pattern and you would want to pattern around the middle of your part. So we're going to do a center point circle. You're going to start here in the center. And let's click and drag this over. Now you'll notice that there's a number that forms here. There's 40 millimeters, 60 millimeters. I want this first circle to be a specific size. I want it to be 21 millimeters. So that's pretty small. It's like this. And you can see that we're snapping to 20 and we're snapping to 40 millimeters. So that's the snapping controls. You can turn it on if you like, but it's usually handy to leave it on. What we should do is zoom in on this part. So if you hold down control and you scroll with the scroll wheel, it's a bit backwards, you're scrolling towards you to zoom in. It just feels a bit counterintuitive. Okay, so now we can snap on these grid lines, uh, which are a little more detailed. So there's 22 millimeters. I could scroll in a little bit further and see that grid line there, there's 21. So that's one option. Another thing you could do, you can actually just literally type in 21 and hit enter, and your circle will be 21 millimeters in diameter. Righto. Now, I want to make another one. So what I'm making here, I'm going to make this bottom part of the nose cone first, and I want these two to be a certain distance apart. Really, the important thing, I want this part of the nose cone to fit inside the rocket tube. And I've measured the rocket tube, and I've done a couple of tests, and I found out that 24.4 millimeters is right about the right size. So make your second circle at 24.4. Sorry if that dimension's a bit off. There you go. You can see that a little easier. So the first circle, 21 millimeters. Second one, 24.4 millimeters. Now, let's finish this sketch. So now if I rotate around, I hold shift and hold down that middle scroll wheel. And this lets you pan around. Okay, we can't really see anything. This is still just a 2D sketch. So what I want to do now, I want to extrude this part. This window should pop up. 
If you don't see it, it might be like sort of hidden off on the side over here like that. You just need to open it up and bring it in. You need to select the profile that we're going to extrude. We want this one. Okay. And you can either just click and drag to bring things up. You can also type in the number. So if I want, I don't know, 12 millimeters sounds good. Hit enter. Ta-da. So now if I rotate around, eh, cool. Looks like a ring. Sure. Whoa, all of a sudden I'm lost. I rotated too much. That's okay. You can always find yourself again. Over here in the navigation cube, you can just hit that little home button. And it'll take you back to the first view that you were looking at. All right, so we've got our first parts down. Next up, I need to make the, well, the interesting part, the curved part. So let's do a more basic version of the curved part to begin with. And what we're going to be doing for that, it is sort of an extrusion, but this one's going to be called a loft. So I want to make another sketch. This time, though, instead of picking one of these three planes to start on, I want to start here. So this is, I mean, the basics of making any kind of complicated part in three dimensions, you make a 2D sketch, you extrude that part out, and then you make more sketches on top of surfaces of the parts that you have. Extrude those parts out, make another sketch, and so on. The whole thing just basically continues like so. Uh, so on this sketch, what I want to do, I want to make one more circle. Uh, it's got to come a little bit past the other one. So 26 will do the trick. Let's go there. Oh, 26. And uh, now we're going to finish the sketch. Now what I want to do, it was easy enough to make a sketch on this plane where our part existed. I want this nose cone to go up to a point up here. So I want to make a sketch somewhere out in space. But that's kind of tough because we don't have a part to actually sketch onto. So this time what I want to do is I want to make a construction plane. Similar to these planes that you see when you sketch, we want to make a new plane to make a sketch. So click Construct. We're going to make an offset plane. I'm going to offset it from, uh, say, this surface here. And let's go up, ooh, I don't know, how about, say, 40 millimeters. You can click and drag. You can also just type in 40. That does the trick. OK. So now what I want to do is make a sketch on this plane. And with this sketch, what I want to do is I actually just want to make one point. That's all. And so you see how everything's lined up on that origin? We're way off here, but everything actually straight up and down, it lines up on that origin. So it's always handy to center things on that origin because now I just want to make a point just right there. That's it. So finish that sketch. That point should be sitting 40 millimeters above your part here. Now I want to create. I want to create and I want to make a loft. So with this loft, I want to loft this, and I want to loft it up to that point right there. You want to make sure that your operation is a join, not making a new body. We want this all to be one part, and you don't want it to be cutting out of your other part. So make sure that it's on join. Here we are. So our most basic nose cone. This is cool. I mean, it gets the idea, uh, but I kind of like the curved version more, and I'd like to show you this one. So let's go back into here. And I don't really want to look at this cone anymore. It's going to mess me up. So what I actually want to do, I'm going to go into the history down on the bottom left here. Here's all the parts that we've done so far. So there's sketch one where we made our first couple circles. There's extrusion one where we extruded this part out. And then the sketch where we made the 26 millimeter circle. There's the offset plane we made. There's just that one point that we made. Here's the loft. So with this loft, I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to suppress this feature for now. And you see now it disappears. So after we've made a loft of sketch 2 and sketch 3, the ones where we did the circle and the point, uh, they no longer become visible. So if you want to see them again, you just need to go click the arrow beside the sketches, click the little eye beside that, and there you see the dot and our first circle show back up. If I want to make a curved part here, I want this loft to follow several circles on its way up. So let's make another offset plane. We're going to go offset from the top here. Let's go up, sure, 20 millimeters. The sizes don't really matter. Now we're talking about the designy, detaily kind of stuff. And I'm sure everyone's is going to turn out unique. So 
hit OK. We're going to make another sketch on this offset plane. And this one, I mean, it needs to be a little bit wider than the straight line would otherwise be. So 16, let's try 18 millimeters. Let's just see what shows up. Finish that sketch. And I'm going to make a new loft. And this loft is going from point 0.1 to 2 to 3. And hit OK. Ooh. That looks pretty slick. I think I'll keep that. So we're almost there. We have the basic shape. But if I look on the inside, you'll notice the first part that we extruded out is hollow, but this part here is solid. And it's probably going to be too heavy to really launch this thing. So I want to hollow this cone out. So I'm going to show you one more tool here. It's under the Modify tab. And this one's called a shell. And shells are handy when you want to just hollow parts out and you don't really want to do a whole lot of uh, thinking about it. So we want to select this face here, sure. And the inside thickness, so this is the thickness of the walls on the inside of the cone. Let's call it 2 millimeters and hit OK. Now, maybe you can see, maybe you can't, but it's hollow on the inside. Let me show you how this works by, I'm going to make another sketch. I'm going to cut a part of this away so that you can actually see what's happening. So let's make a sketch on the bottom plane here, sure. Whoops, sorry, wrong button. Uh, I'm going to make a rectangle. It doesn't really matter where you make the rectangle. Let's just cut, like, say, half of this shape out. Make your rectangle bigger than half of the shape like this. Finish that sketch. Extrude that rectangle up like that. Make sure that the operation is a cut, not a join. Otherwise, you're just adding a block to it. So we're cutting away half of it. Hit OK and see what happens. Ooh, slick. I like it. OK. Now, I want to make sure that I don't leave this extrusion in the part before we print it. I don't want to print half a nose cone. So I'm going to right click on that and delete because that was just to see what was happening. OK, so I'm happy with my shape. For now, at least I might want to go in afterwards and change a few things. Like I might want to build a few supports in here or something like that. Maybe, you know, put some ribs in to make it a little bit stronger. So what I want to do, I want to save this. I want to save a fusion file of it so that I can go back and edit that fusion file later. So how are we going to do this? Go to the save button here. And just remember, this needs to be your own account. If you're on somebody else's account, you're going to be saving this to somebody else's account. This is specific to you. I'm going to save this. Let's call this uh, Nose Cone. And save it, sure, in your first project. It doesn't really matter where the location is. Because where you're going to find this again, it's in the data panel here. And if you click on a tab that says My Recent Data, you're going to find all of the recent ones that showed up. So here's my most recent Nose Cone that I've just made. So if you need to open this again, you just double click and that one's going to open up. Radio. So what we've done is saved it. We haven't actually made this ready to print yet. What we need to do is export this and slice it. There's two more operations that need to happen. This is just a series of lines and shapes and a mesh. It's really nothing yet. So what we need to do, we need to export this body to a slicing program called Tinkerine Suite 3. The easiest way to do this, if you click on the arrow beside the bodies here, and you'll see body one shows up. Hopefully there's only one. If there's more than one, we'll need to fix that by combining things together. Uh, but you're going to want to right click on body one and select save as STL. STL is a file type. It's a very old one. It stands for stereo lithography or something like that. Um, but basically it's just a really simple 3D shape. And this is the standard sort of 3D file type that 3D printers use. Let's call this uh, nosecone.stl. It's probably a good idea to put your name in it. So I'm going to put mine here at the beginning of this part, Mr. B. Nosecone.stl. Voila. Okay. So the next part, after we've exported it, I guess I could show you the other way to export it. You can also go to export. You can call it nose cone version 1 and just need to make sure that you're saving it as an STL file. You can also save things as other type of files. Those can be handy for other things. You want to make sure it's an STL. Okay, so at this point, we're done with Fusion. 
at least for now until we want to redesign this. Now we need to go into a slicing program called Tinkering Suite 3 to, it's called slicing, literally what we're doing, we're taking this part and we're going to turn it into a bunch of layers that the 3D printer can understand because it needs to go layer by layer. It doesn't really understand just a block of stuff, okay? But at any rate, that's it for this tutorial. There's going to be a different tutorial to show you how to slice, okay? So I hope you have enjoyed this. We've learned how to extrude shapes. We've learned how to make an offset plane. We learned how to make a loft. We learned how to make a shell. There's all sorts of uh, good tools that are going to be useful for fusion and 3D modeling in the future that you've learned in this video. And hopefully your nose cone works in the end. That's it for this one. See you next time.